Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back, welcome to Boston everybody. This is the IBM Chief Data Officer Summit. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Inder Paul Bhandari is here. He's the newly appointed Chief Data Officer at IBM. He's joined by, joined by Bob Picciano, who's the Senior Vice President of IBM's Analytics Group. Bob, great to see you again. Inder Paul, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Happy to be great to, to see here. you guys. So, good event. Bob, let's start with you. Um, yeah. You guys have been on the Chief Data Officer kick for several years now. You were ahead yep. of the curve. Yep. What are you trying to achieve at, at this event? Yeah, so Dave, thanks again for having us here and thanks for being here as well to help your audience share what we're doing here. We've always appreciated that, uh, your commitment to, to helping the, the masses understand all the important pulses that are going on in the industry. Um, what we're doing here is we're, we're really moderating a uh, forum uh, between chief data officers. Uh, and we started this really on in the curve, as you said, you know, 2014, where the conference was pretty small. There were some people who were actually examining the role, thinking about becoming a chief data officer. We probably had a few formal chief data officers. And we're talking about, you know, maybe 100 or so people who are participating in the very first one. Uh, now you can see it's not, you know, it's, much, it's grown much larger. We have hundreds of people, and we're doing it multiple times a year in multiple cities. But what we're really doing is we're bringing together a moderated forum. Um, and, and it's a privilege to be able to do this. Uh, this is not about selling anything to anybody. This is about exchanging ideas, understanding you know, what are the challenges of the role, what are the opportunities, what's changing about the role, what's changing about the market and the landscape, what new risks might be on the horizon, what new opportunities might be on the horizon. Uh, and we, you know, we really like to listen very closely uh, to what's going on so we can you know, maybe build better approaches to help them, whether that's through the services we provide or whether that's through the cloud capabilities we're offering or whether that's new products and services that need to be developed. Um, and so it gives us a great understanding and we're really fortunate to have our chief data officer here, uh, Inderpal, who's doing a great job in IBM and uh, in helping us on our mission around really becoming a cognitive enterprise and making uh, analytics and insight uh, and data really be uh, central to that uh, transformation. So Dr. Mandari, uh, new, to, uh, new to the chief data officer role, not new to IBM, you worked here and came back. I was first exposed to the role maybe four or five years ago at the MIT chief data officer mm -hmm. event. Okay, so you come in as a chief data officer in December. Where do you start? So, you know, I've had the, the, the fortune of being in this role for a long time. I, I was one of the earliest. I created the role for healthcare in 2006. Then I've honed that role over three different uh, chief data officer appointments at healthcare companies. And now I'm at IBM. So I do have, you know, I do view the, the job as a craft. So it's a practitioner job and there's a craft to it. And to answer your question, there are five things that you have to do to get moving on the job. And three of those have to be done sequentially, and two must be done in parallel with everything else. So the five are, I mean, the first thing is you've got to develop a data strategy. And a data strategy is around, is focused around having an understanding of how the company monetizes or plans to monetize itself. You know, what is the strategic monetization path of the company? Not so much how it monetizes data, but what is it trying to do? How is it going to make money in the future? So in the case of IBM, it's all around cognition, it's around enabling customers to become cognitive businesses, so my data strategy, or our data strategy, I should say, is focused on enabling cognition, becoming a cognitive enterprise. You know, and we've now realized that's in fact a prerequisite for cognition. So that's the data strategy piece, and that's the very first thing that needs to be done. Because once you understand that, then you understand what data is critical for the company. So you don't boil the ocean. Instead, what you do is you begin to govern exactly what's necessary and make sure it's fit for purpose. And then you can also create trusted data sources around those critical data assets that are critical for the, for the monetization strategy of the company. So those three have to go in sequence because if you don't do one, you can't do two adequately, you can't do three. And there are also significant pitfalls if you don't follow that sequence because you can end up boiling the ocean. And the other two activities that must be done concurrently, uh, one is in terms of establishing deep partnerships with the other areas of the company, the key business units, the key functional units, because that's how you end up understanding what that data strategy ought to be. You know, if you don't have that knowledge of the company, 
by making that effort, that due diligence, uh, then it's very difficult to get that data strategy right. So you've got to establish those partnerships. And then the, the fifth one is because this is a space where you do require very significant talent. You have to start developing that talent and that organi organizational capability right from day one. So, Bob, you said that uh, data is the new middle manager. You can't have an effective middle manager uh, unless you at least have some framework that was just described. Is oh, that fair? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when Interpol talks about that fourth initiative about the engagement with the business units and making sure that we're in alignment on how the company is monetizing its value to its clients, his involvement with our team goes way beyond how he thinks about what data it is that we're collecting and the products that we're offering and what we might understand about our customers or about the marketplace. His involvement goes also into how we're curating the right user experience for who we want to empower with our products and offerings. Sometimes that's the role of the chief data officer. Sometimes that's the role of a data engineer. Sometimes it's the role of a data scientist. You mentioned data becoming the new middle manager. Middle manager. We think the citizen analyst is ushering in that from, from their uh, seat, uh, but we also need to be able to, from an IT perspective, to help them eliminate the, I, the IT long tail and, and get transparency of the information, and sometimes it's the application developer. So we, uh, we collaborate on a very frequent basis where when we think about offering new capabilities to those roles, well, what's the data implication of that? What's the governance implication of that? How do we make it a seamless experience so as people start to move down the path of igniting all of the innovation across those roles, there's a continuum to the information they're using to be able to do that, how it's serving the enterprise, how it leads to that transformation to be a cognitive enterprise, uh, and, uh, and that's a very, very close collaboration. We're moving from, you said in your talk, the process era to what I just inserted to an insight era. Yeah. Um, and I have a question around that. I'm not sure exactly how to formulate it, but maybe okay. you can help. In the process era, technology was unknown. The process was very well known, mm -hmm. well known but technology was mysterious. We went to IBM and said help. Today, it seems as though the process is unknown. The technology's pretty known. Look at what Uber, Airbnb are doing. They're grabbing different technologies and putting them together, but the process is, is new. First of all, is that a reasonable observation? And if so, what does that mean for chief data officers? So uh, the process is, you know, is, is new in the sense that in terms of making it a cognitive process, it's going to end up being new, right? So the Uberization that you- Never you done it before. For, it's never been done before, <laughs> right? right? The, in that sense. But it's different from uh, process automation in the past. This is much more about knowledge, being able to scale knowledge, not just a, you know, across one process, but across all the processes that make up a company. And so in that, that goes also to the comment about data being the middle manager. I mean, if you've essentially got the ability to scale and manage knowledge, not just data, but knowledge in terms of the insights that the people who are working these processes are coming up with in conjunction with these data and intelligent capabilities that, we've, that, 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 that are the hub, right? It's the intelligent system that's at the hub of this that's enabling all that. So that, that's really what leads to, uh, leads to the, the so-called Uberization. That you might yeah, Dave Stu, uh, another important aspect of this is the process is dramatically different in the, in, in the sense that it's ongoing. It's, a, it's continuous, uh -huh. right? The process and your intimacy with Uber and the trust that you're developing in the brand doesn't start and stop with one transaction. It actually you know, branches into many different things. So your expectations uh, as that relationships evolve change, so what they need to understand about you, what they need to protect about you, how they need to protect you in their transformation, the richness of their service needs to continue to evolve. So how they perform that task uh, and the abundance of information they have available to perform that task, but the difficulty of being able to really consume it and make use of it is, is a change. The other thing is it's a lot more conversational, right? So the process isn't a deterministic set of steps that someone at a desk can really formulate in a business rule or a static process. It's conversational, it changes, it needs to be disambiguated, it needs to introduce new information during the process of that disambiguation. And, and that really, really calls upon the capabilities of a cognitive system that is rich in its ability to understand and interact with natural language, to potentially introduce other sources of rich information because you might take a picture about what you're experiencing. And all those things change that, that notion from the process to the conversational element. 
Dr. Bhandari, uh, you, you've got an interesting role. Uh, if companies like IBM, I, I think about the, you know, IT, the CIO, the CDO, not only do you have your internal role, but you're also you know, a model for, for people going out there. You come to events like this, you're trying to help people in the role. Uh, you, you'd been a CDO at some healthcare organizations. Can you tell us you know, what's been different about being kind of the internal role uh, of IBM, uh, what kind of things, IBM obviously a uh, you know, strong technology culture, uh, but it, it tell us a little bit of insights you've learned. What, what's, uh, anything surprised you, uh, you know, in, in your time that you've been doing it? Oh, you know, over the course of uh, time that I've been doing the, the role across four different organizations? Yeah, I, I guess specifically it's, at IBM, what, what, what's different there? You know, I mean, IBM, for one thing, is a, uh, the, the environment has tremendous scale. And uh, if you're essentially talking about taking cognition to the enterprise, that gives us a tremendous uh, test bed to try out all the capabilities that we are basically offering to our, uh, to our customers and to hone that in the context of our own enterprise, you know, to build our own cognitive enterprise. And that's the journey that we, you know, we, we're sharing with our, uh, with our customers and so forth. So that's, that's different in, uh, in, 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 that wasn't the case in the previous, uh, previous roles that I had. And uh, I think uh, the other aspect that's different is the, the complexity of the organization. Uh, this is a large global organization. That wasn't true of the previous roles as well. Uh, they were much more uh, North America uh, centric. Uh, you know, organizations. And so there's, a, there's an aspect there that also then adds complexity to the role in terms of uh, having to deal with different countries, different languages, you know, different regulations. Uh, it just becomes much more uh, complex. And you first became a CDO in 2006, you said? 2006, Which, was, which yes. was the same year as the federal rules of civil procedure came out and the emails became smoking guns. And, and then it was data viewed as a liability and now it's you know, completely viewed as an, asset, an but asset. It, it, but traditionally the CDO role was financial services and healthcare and government and you know, highly regulated businesses and it's clearly now seeping into to new industries. What's driving that? Is it that value? Component? Well, it is. I mean, it's, I think that understanding that you know, there's a tremendous natural resource in, in the information and the data, um, but there is a, you know, very much uh, you know, yin and yang around that notion of being responsible. I mean, one of the things that we're very proud of is the type of trust that we've established over you know, our 105 year journey with our clients uh, in the types of interactions we have with one another, the level of intimacy that we have in their business and a you know, very foundational way that we serve them. Uh, and so we can never, ever do anything to, to compromise that. Um, you know, so the focus on really providing the ability to, to do the necessary governance and to do the necessary data provenance and lineage and cybersecurity while not stifling innovation and being able to push into the next horizon. Interpol mentioned the fact that IBM in and of itself, we think of ourselves as a laboratory, a laboratory for cognitive innovation, uh, innovation a laboratory for design innov innovation, uh, which is so necessary in the, in the digital era. And I think we've done a really good job in those spaces, but we're constantly pushing the envelope. A good example of that is blockchain, right, a technology that you know, sometimes people think about in nefarious circumstances about, you know, what it meant to the ability to launch a Silk Road or something of that nature. We looked at the innovation, understanding quite a lot about it, being one of the core innovators around it, and, and saw great promise in being able to transform the way people thought about, you know, clearing, uh, you know, multi-party transactions and applied it to our own IBM credit organization to think about a very transparent hyperledger. We could bring those multiple parties together Absolutely. People could have transparency in the transactions, have a great deal of access into that space, and in a very, very rapid amount of time, we were able to, to take our very sizable IBM credit organization and implement that hyperledger, also while thinking about the data regulation, the data governance implications of that. I think that's a really that, that's a, that's example. A, abs that, that's absolutely right. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Bob mentioned the example about uh, the IBM credit organization, but there is there are implications far beyond that. There are applications far beyond that. Mm -hmm. In the data space, you know, it, it affords us now the opportunity to bring together uh, identity management, uh, you know, the, the profiles that people uh, create uh, from data, uh, the security aspects, and essentially combine all of these aspects into what will then really become a trusted source of data. Mm -hmm. You know, by uh, trusted by, I don't mean internally, but trusted by the, 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 the consumers of the data, the subjects of the data, uh, because the, you'll be able to do that much in, in a way that's absolutely appropriate, not just fit for business purpose, but also very, very respectful of the consent and uh, those aspects, the privacy aspects 
of data. So blockchain really is a critical uh, technology. Hyperledge is a great example. We were at uh, IBM Edge this week. You're going to be with, at World of Watson. We will be at World of Watson. Coming we out. had the yep. CEO of, of Everledger on, mm -hmm. and they basically brought a million diamonds <laughs> in bringing transparency to the diamond industry. It's, a, it's fraught with, uh, uh, right. with fraud and right. theft and right. <laughs> you know, you know, counterfeiting. and Helping preserve the integrity of the industry and eliminating the blood diamonds and they, right? It's, it's fascinating yep. to see how you know this Bitcoin you know, and so many people disparage it as a currency, but not just a currency. You know, and you guys, IBM saw that early on, and obviously participated in the open source piece. You know the old saying, follow the money, but this is like follow the data. So if I understand it correctly, your job as CDO is to sort of supercharge the, the, the business lines with the data strategy, and then, Bob, your job as the line of business managers to supercharge your, your customers' businesses yeah. with the data strategy. Is that right? Is that the right value chain? I think you nailed it. Bob, uh, one of the things people are struggling with these days is, you know, if they can get their own data in-house, yeah. then they've also got to deal with third-party data, yes. industry data, Absolutely. everything like that. IBM's role in that data chain is really interesting. You talked this morning about kind of the weather channel and kind of the data play there. Yeah. You know, what's, what's IBM's role in there going forward? It's one of the most exciting things, yeah. I think, about how we've uh, evolved our strategy. And, and, you know, we're very fortunate to have Ginny at the helm who really understands you know, that transformational landscape and, and how partnerships really change the ability to innovate for the companies we serve. Um, and it was very obvious in understanding our clients' problems that while they had a wealth of information that they were dealing with internally, there was great promise in being able to introduce these outside signals, if you will, insights from other sources of data. Sometimes I call them vectors of information um, that could really transform uh, the way they were thinking about solving their customer problems. So, you know, why wouldn't you ever want to understand that customer's sentiment about your brand or about the product or service? And as a consequence of that, you know, capabilities that are there on Twitter or WeChat or Line are essential to that, depending on where your brand is operating. And your brand's probably operating in a multinational space anyway, so you have to listen to all those signals. And they're all in multiple language. And sentiment uh, is very, very bespoke. It's a different language. So you have to apply sophisticated machine learning. We've invented new algorithms to understand how to glean the signal out of all that white noise. You, you use the weather example as well. You know, we think about the economic impact of climate, atmosphere, weather on business, and it's profound. It's a half a trillion dollars, you know, in each calendar year that are, you know, lost information, lost assets, uh, lost opportunity, misplaced inventory, you know, undelivered inventory, and we think we can do a better job of helping our clients take the weather excuses out of business in a variety of different industries. And so we've focused our initiatives on that information integration, governance, understanding, new analytics to to introduce those outside signals directly in the heart and want to place it on the desk of the chief data officer or those who are innovating around information and, and data. My, um, my joke last Columbus Day was Dell's buying EMC, IBM's buying the weather company. What, is, what does that say? My question is, Interpol, when, when M&A happens, and Bob, when you go out and purchase companies that are data driven, what role does the chief data officer play in both M&A, you know, pre and, 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 and post? So, uh, you know, I think the one of the, the, the there have been a, I'm just going to touch on uh, a couple of points that Bob made, sure, and then I'll, 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 I'll address your question directly as well. Uh, in terms of the role of the chief data officer, I think you'd, you'd given me that question before and how that's evolved. The one very interesting thing that's happening now with what IBM is doing is that previously the chief data officer role, at least with regard to the data, not so much the strategy, but the data itself was uh, internal focused. You know, you, you kind of worried about the data you had in-house or the data you were bringing in. Now you've got to worry as much about the exogenous data. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, that's, so that's one way that that role has uh, changed considerably and is changing and evolving and it's creating new opportunities for us. The other is, uh, again, in the past, the chief data officer role was around creating a warehouse for analytics and separated out from the operational processes. That's changing too, because now we've got to transform these processes themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's, some, you know, that's, that's another uh, expanded role. To come back to acquisitions, m and I mean, I view that as essentially another process that a, you know, a company has, and so the chief data officer role is pretty key in terms of enabling that, both in terms of uh, data, but also in terms of giving uh, you know, guidance and advice if, for instance, the, the acquisition is in that realm, 
uh, itself, then you know, then we, we'd be more closely involved. But if it's beyond that, in terms of being able to get the right data to that process, as well as then, once you've acquired the company and being able mm -hmm. to integrate back right. the critical data assets, right. uh, those are the key aspects it's of, an the, ongoing of the role. So you've got, I mean, at the simplest level, you've got data sources and all the things associated with that, and then you've got your algorithms and your machine learning, and we're, we're moving beyond sort of Hadoop to cut costs into this new right. era. Oh, absolutely. But so how do companies adjudicate, and I guess they got to do both, you've got to get new data sources and you've got to improve this continuous process, Bob, yep. that you talked about. How do you guide your customers as to where they put their resources? No, that, and that's really, Dave, as you, you know, you're touching on it again, that's really the benefit of this sort of a forum and this yeah. sort of a conference. It's sharing the best practices of how the top experts in the world are, are really wrestling with that and, and identifying, I think, you know, Interpol's framework, what do you do sequentially to build the disciplines, to build the solid core and foundation, to make the connections that are aligned with the business strategy, and then what do you do concurrently along that model to continue to iterate, and how do you, how do you manage and make sure your stakeholders understand what's being done, what they need to continue to do to evolve the innovation, and you know, come join us here, and, and we'll go through that in detail, but uh, you know, Indipal did a great job of sharing his framework of success, and I think in the other room, other CDOs are doing that now. Yeah, I, I just wanted to quickly add to Bob's comment. The, the framework that I described, right, it has a check and balance built into mm -hmm. it. Because if you are all about governance, then the CDO role becomes very defensive in mm -hmm. nature. It's all about making sure you're within the, uh, you know, within the guardrails and so forth. But you're not really moving forward in a strategic way to help the company. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why uh, you know, setting it up by driving it from the strategy down uh, just makes it you know, easier yep. to strike that balance. Less clerical and more about innovation. Yeah. You know, we talked about the D in CDO today, meaning data, but really I think about it as being a, a great crucible for, for disruption and disruption. innovation. Because chief if, disruption officer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I call it call the call chief it. disruption <laughs> officer. So and, if you. And, and, and data is, digital is data, so there's that, that piece yep. of it as well. Yep. We have to go, I don't want to go. But so, <laughs> one last question for each of you. So, Interpol, uh, Thinking about, and you kind of just touched on it, not just playing defense, you know, thinking you know, more offense. This role, where do you want to take it? What are your, you know, sort of midterm, long term goals with this role? It's uh, the, the, the specific role at IBM, or yes. the just in general, yes, the yes. specific role? Well, I think in uh, the case of IBM, we have the data strategy pretty well defined now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all about being able to enable a cognitive enterprise. And so in, you know, in, in uh, my mind, in two to three years, we'll have completely established how that ought to be done you know, as a prescription. And we'll also have our clients uh, essentially sharing in that, uh, in that journey so that they can go off and create cognitive enterprises uh, themselves. So th that's pretty well set. You know, I have a sh pretty short window, two to three years, to make that, uh, make that happen. And I think it's it's doable, and I think it'll be uh, you know just just a tremendous uh, transformation. Well, we're excited to be to be watching and and, and, and documenting that. Now, Bob, I have to ask you, World of Watson coming up, new yes. name for for new conference. We're trying to get Pepper on. We're trying to get Ginny on. <laughs> you know, let's see what should we expect. Maybe you could give oh, us a well, little glimpse. Oh look, I mean, I, I think this year we're sort of blowing the roof off, and literally we're getting so big that we had to move the venue. Um, it is very much still at its core, that multiple practitioner, that multiple industry event that you experienced with Insight, right? So whether or not you're thinking about this and the auspices of managing your traditional environments and what you need to do to bring them into the future and how you tie these things together, that's there for you. All those great industry tracks around the product agendas and what's coming out uh, are, are there. But the level of inspiration and involvement around this cognitive uh, innovation space is, is going to be front and center. We're joined by Ginny Rometty herself, who's going to be a very special uh, keynote. We have, uh, I think, an unprecedented lineup of uh, industry leaders who are going to come and talk about disruption and about disruption in the cognitive era. Uh, and then, uh, and as always, the most valuable thing is the journeys that our clients and our partners are sharing with us about how we're leading this uh, inflection point and transformation in the industry. So. I'm very much excited to see you there, and uh, I hope uh, that your audience joins us as well. Great. Well, Interpol, uh, congratulations on the new role. Thank you. Thank you. I got a couple good blog, blog posts out of your comments today, so I really appreciate that. <laughs> and Bob, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for having us here. really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right, keep Cheers. right there, everybody. This is theCUBE. We'll be back. This is the IBM Chief Data Officer Summit. We're live from Boston. Be right back.
My name is Dave Vellante and I'm a long 